to reply to issues raised at the wind of the debate. Honorable Minister, please. Honorable Speaker and members of the August Assembly, I thank you all for your contribution, which were very valuable. And from the records, nine speakers took the floor and made pertinent comments on the budget speech, which are very enlightening. And I will try to respond there too. I'll begin with the member for Willie East, and he made three areas of intervention, particularly starting with the fight on corruption, diversification of uh, illicit funds, uh, mining sector to be revamped and focus center. Yes, these are consistent with government policies, as we have indicated in the budget statement, we have referred 13 cases for uh, review in matters of uh, transactions relating to unlawful public resources. And for the mining sector, this is an area which is quite important and it's uh, really been looked at at a sectoral level. Uh, it is currently under the Minister of Petroleum and Energy and we are pleased to inform the August Assembly that the actuals for 2023 were not lodged at the time of the budget preparation as the contractor had some operational delays in lodging funds. That's why the accounts, they don't feature them. But as we speak right now, those logistic delays have been addressed and an amount of $2 million have already been lodged in relation to the mining transactions. So that is addressed. So uh, given that we believe the same trend or more can continue next year, even though there was no expect specific budget line along that line of that magnitude. Trade, of course, is an important role, and the Ministry of Trade is working. Uh, we're pleased to announce that uh, China has now included Gambia as one of the, those countries that will be able to trade directly. There was an embargo on Gambian transaction directly, so we are believing that this will open the gateway for the purchase of our ground on by Chinese companies directly. Uh, the export market will also be given a boost by this reaction. Uh, the work of the Revenue Directorate is uh, noted, and the impact of the MCP uh, Monetary Policy Committee in terms of its interest rate hikes. Yes, while it tried to corpse inflation, it's very contractionary. That's noted. That's why on the fiscal side, we have also been careful not to apply too many breaks on the system and, into, and sustain some element of subsidy. We are aware subsidies are not the best allocation of state resources. But as I have mentioned, we are waiting for the completion of the social safety, uh, social register. I think Banjur and KMC are pending. If those uh, are included, then we will stop blanket subsidy. And we will go for a means-tested subsidy, where, which means that we will have a situation where we'll do a full pass-through and the vulnerable communities or persons as identified in the social register will be given the subsidy. Yes, uh, these are. On the issue of uh, tax, what we are trying to do now, we are not trying to, introduce, apart from the three areas we have mentioned, which have specifically increased taxes, that is cigarette, gambling, and wines, and alcohol, we have not increased any tax rate specifically. Of course, motor vehicles also, we increase some duties on old ones. What we are envisaging is a broadening of the tax base through compliance. We have noticed that uh, enhanced compliance has resulted in positive results. Uh, as we speak this year, we, the increase of uh, which 
all the esteemed members of the August Assembly have raised as to whether our target for GRA is realistic. But we are back by numbers because GRA in 2022 collected 11.5 billion. And this year they are going to collect about 15.4 billion. So literally it's the same quantum in terms of dollars amount that we are expecting them to do. And with the contribution we are now, the single window is operating. Uh, compliance rates have increased. So we believe that we have to bring more taxpayers into the tax net than increasing the tax burden on the current taxpayers. That is very, very important. The issue on property tax. First of all, withholding is not a tax. We are not imposing any new tax on rent. What we are asking is existing current, there is a tax for rental income. It's just that it's not being applied. But we have not introduced any new taxes for rents. No new taxes have been introduced for rents, just that currently the, uh, the, it's not been paid. And when we introduce the withholding, we do not mean withholding at the level of a Roman palo, at the level of subsistence. What we are talking about is withholding at the level of corporate properties and government transactions, ministries, directories, and agencies. Those are the ones we are expecting to introduce this withholding tax. Like if a ministry rents your building, or a department rents a building, or a corporation rents a building, those are the type of transactions which we expect should attract the withholding mainly. But no new taxes have been increased in the property area, and that's, that's noted. The member for Kiang West talked about the youths, and we have uh, said this, and we will continue to repeat it, that youths are the bulk of the position, uh, population, more than 60%, and the allocation of the budget to youths is not just what belongs to that youth ministry. If you look at the education sector, most of the scholarship in the University of the Gambia are attributable to the youths. If you look at the agriculture ministry, a number of interventions are attributable to youths. Ministry of Trade, Employment Creation Activities are all geared towards youths. Uh, I think what should come out mainly is for the sector ministry to come and consolidate all the government interactions in the different agencies and ministries so that the population can see the overall government engagement in the youth space. Uh, the budget of the Ministry of Youth and Sports alone is a far underestimation of government commitment to youths. Because if you look at any, any area uh, that government is involving in transactions with, uh, a large chunk of it is addressing the issues of youths. So the issue of water bill has been noted. And as I have mentioned in the uh, statement itself, the ministry has made a commitment to table the water bill before this August assembly shortly. And uh, increase in revenue has been noted, and we, we, we've made mention of that. The other members for Josh Huang has mentioned about uh, the monitoring of the revenue collections. Yes, uh, compliance has increased, and uh, the GRA is cooperating, supporting. Right now, we are always trying to triangulate the data. Like, we are working with the Financial Reporting Oversight Board. We are working with the uh, Accountant General so that when we see transactions that are related to tax or where tax triggers will happen. And we're also working with the social security, particularly pay as you earn. One area we need to focus additional work on is the value added tax, VAT, which compliance will also be enhanced. And this work is being done through the uh, tax and revenue directorate. The role of subvention, yes, uh, this is noted because subvented agencies have a transaction with the government of just being allocated resources and no subsequent uh, reporting mechanism exists. But we are working on that to see how we can work together uh, to enhance the role of uh, reporting by increasingly putting most of these subvented entities on the IFMIS system, that way their transactions will be visible. The role of the SOEs, yes, is noted, and we did, as a ministry, sign performance contracts. But because dividend 
it's very difficult to predict. So that's why we have only factored in the dividend from central bank, which is more predictable. But for the SOEs, uh, we have put dividend as a requirement in the SOEs in a performance contract, but have not budgeted them because we want to be conservative. We know their condition, so the, SOE, uh, the performance contract has dividend as a condition, but we did not want to bloat the budget by putting in things that we are not very sure. There, is not, there has not been a very good track record of dividend payment from the SOEs. So we will wait until they have been paying consistently and a track record established before uh, rolling it into the budget proper. Uh, the role of SIG is noted, and this is one area which has been a focus of discussion. A number of uh, last year, the SIG was uh, delayed simply because the ministry keeps getting reports on the SIC implementation. And we cannot get reports on SIC implementation that we are working with the ministry to resolve and then still continue to allocate resources. What we did last year is we disbursed 77 million, which was areas of the SIG to the schools. Uh, this was done around June, July. And the agreement we had was we will disburse this to you, but for the next academic year SIGs, we should see how those SIGs were spent. And we are still waiting for that. We have no interest as a ministry to delay any obligation of government, particularly into a sector like education. And even in the area of textbooks, we have also tried to work with the government printers for them to print textbooks and distribute to schools directly instead of allocating uh, resources to them uh, through for them to buy textbooks themselves. Uh, on the subsidies, I have mentioned that we will not continue the full subsidy mechanism that we are doing, but I do side with the member for all union. I think these are some of the points that the citizens should take note of government intervention in accommodating the challenging situation we are going through. Uh, fuel subsidy last year, year in 2022 was 1.6 billion. This year was about 400 million plus. So certainly these are foregone revenues which we have not taken as government simply because we wanted to reduce the burden of the trying economic conditions that we are going through. Uh, on the withholding tax related to rent, I will again clarify that withholding is not a new tax and there is no new introduction of rental tax. Uh, we'll make this abundantly clear. Uh, if any landlord wants to increase their rent, that will be for other reasons but not for taxes. No tax rate has been increased. What is happening is that rental income compliance was very low and now GRA is going after the landlords to say come forward and start honoring your rental income tax obligations. Uh, that, that is it. And this will go, of course, also answers the question on the non-tax revenue. There are very limited, if no taxes increase. These are user charges that like, for example, the medical and health, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Judiciary, Fisheries. These are non-taxes, uh, but they are like non-tax revenues in the sense that it's on a need of utilization. If you do not go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to attest a marriage certificate, you will not pay for it. But you will realize that currently that service is being rendered without any charges. It's, it's free of charge as we speak. And government resources are being used. And the burden at any one time, uh, I don't think it will be out of order for government to ask a citizen to pay for your documentation to be notarized. Uh, this, is, this is standard in any country. So these are some of the things we are introducing. But we are mindful of, any, of the impact of these revenue measures on the citizens. We've not increased any corporation tax rate. We've not increased any personal income tax rate. We've not increased the VAT tax rate. The only taxes we have increased, as I have mentioned, were the three categories. So all we are trying to do is to enhance compliance, broaden the tax base, so that the burden on the existing payers will be not increased. Because without that, that means that we're only going for the people under the tax net. 
and that is what the new reforms are centered towards. Uh, I will again remember for Fonyi Jarol, control measures that will be done for implementation. Yes, I think budget has a process. You have the preparation, approval, and the implementation. Uh, we will try. We have submitted the budget implementation report for the first half year to this August assembly, and we will continue in the next year to even make it more frequent, like quarterly if possible, so that the assembly and the Gambian population at large will be informed of the budget implementation. So we will be mindful of that. A number of uh, honorable members mentioned the issue of corruption as a, as a challenge. But we will tell you, the info, uh, Assembly, that this is very much on the agenda of the President and the, and the Cabinet and the government overall. That's uh, why we engage partners to, in, to do diagnostic study, to identify what are the vulnerabilities, so that we protect our citizens that are working in the civil service. Because some of these transactions, you cannot just fault people, but ex prevent them by putting the technology or procedures that will minimize the tendencies for this uh, illicit transaction to continue. So payment of rental income uh, in foreign currency, this is illegal. And, but as you know, a contract is between two parties. If the tenant and the landlord agrees, and they have their side agreement between them, I don't think the state may be aware, but there's nothing that's legal in those transactions. The legal tender in the Gambia is the Dallasi, and all transactions that are carried out in this country should be denominated in Dallasi. Unfortunately, if the landlord insists on a foreign currency and the tenant agrees, well, government may not be aware of it, but we will explain that all contracts that are domicile in this country should be domicile in the local currency unless the parties there to agree, which, is, which then becomes out of government control. But we do not, and we will continue to uh, emphasize that uh, there is no rule that foreign rent should be denominated in foreign currency. If parties do so, that is their, their own discretion, but it's not in line with the laws of the land. Uh, then the issue of the security sector, we take note uh, of the importance of the security sector. That has been the reason why uh, allocation has increased accordingly. And particularly when it comes to the rationing and food and food services, uh, work will be on that. We'll contact the uh, ministries concerned to see how we can improve on the uh, rollout to ensure that the armed forces and the security personnel have the resources that the state deploy to them. And we will hasten also to emphasize that in the course of budget implementation, there will be time lags, because there will be times that the resources collected are less than the demands. That's what it gives about this budget allocation on a monthly basis. But if the resources are coming forth as we expect, we believe that the allocation will be near as close to the budget as is possible, subject to resource availability. And one thing we can uh, say at this moment, we are pleased that we have been able to conclude the year as we speak. Up to December today, 11th, budget support will be coming before the end of the year, but we've been managing with our own resources, which has not been very easy. But that's what it takes uh, to do things at this stage. AMRC liquidation is ongoing because of the non-viability of the institution, and there have been two categories, essential and non-essential staffs. Essential staff have uh, been deployed. The non-essential staff are going through a severance procedure, which will be rolled out shortly. Uh, I think this, uh, the issue for Banjul not mentioned the issue of the increase in the duty waivers. Yes, this is due to the unrolling out of the uh, but in hiding highway and large government contracts. But uh, this has been carefully looked at. That's why the budget statement did include a provision for enhanced digitalization of the duty waiver procedure. Yes, uh, these are some of the note has also been made of the useful contribution of the women enterprise funds and the need to establish a youth enterprise funds. But we will inform the August Assembly that we will transform the SDF 
into a financial institution, we should be a financial institution available to provide financing to the women and youth groups shortly. And the reforms are ongoing. Right now, the SDF has already submitted an application to the central bank for their transformation to a financial institution. Honorable Speaker, these are the points I have taken note of. Unless I miss out anything, I thank you all for your kind attention, and I submit. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Members, Speaker. in accordance with Order 87.6 of the Standing Orders, I put the question that the bill entitled the Appropriation Bill 2024 be read a second time. Those in favor, please say aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Clark, can you read the short title of the bill? Appropriation Bill 2024. Honorable members, as per Order 87.8 of the Standing Orders, the Assembly will resolve into the Committee of Supply to consider the appropriation bill at its next sitting, which is tomorrow, Tuesday, 12 December 2023, to consider the bill head by head. Honorable members, let me thank all of you, those who have participated in the debate, and those who listened attentively. Equally, on, on behalf of both sides of the Assembly, we want to thank the Honorable Minister for ably responding to issues raised and to his technical staff. 